Hello everybody and welcome to the Horizon and in today's video we're going to be taking a short break from the 370Z Supercharger series to do an oil change DIY video on my roommate's 4Runner. This is a 5th gen 2017 4Runner. My roommate's been kind enough to lend this to me over the past few days while we've been dealing with the snow and ice situation here in Texas because I can't really drive the 370Z around at the moment. So in order to pay her back for letting me borrow the truck I'm going to do a complete oil change and today I'm going to show you guys how to do it in detail. So the first step, as with most oil change DIYs, is you'll have to lift your hood up. So this is the four liter engine that comes in the fifth gen 4Runner. At least most models, I believe there was a four cylinder that was offered in 2010. Um, but you wanna take a look at your oil fill cap. For all fifth gen 4Runners, it should take SAE 0W20 oil. Specifically, it takes about six and a half quarts. So I've gone down to my local auto parts store and I've picked up seven quarts of the 0W20 oil. I always go for full synthetic. And then you also should pick up an oil filter. This is the part number from Supertech, who is the oil filter brand that I decided to just go ahead and get, um, ST10158. There's a few other brands as well with different model numbers. If you go into an auto parts store and ask them for the correct part number, they should be able to get you your oil filter. Um, and then also just make sure that you can access your dipstick. We'll be getting to this later, but it's gonna be on this side of the car here next to your air filter. Before we do any work up top, we're gonna to wanna to start by going down below and removing some of the different skid plates and things that are gonna cover our oil drain plug. So we need to remove this skid plate here to make our lives easier. You wanna remove this plastic piece first. In order to do that, there is a little plastic clip right here. You can use a flathead screwdriver to get under here and pull this out. And then there's also going to be, um, I believe five of these little 10 millimeter bolts. There's one here, here. There's one over here in the middle one on that side and then we've got that fifth one over there. So let's go ahead and pull this plastic part off. So now we can set to work removing the metal skid plate. There's a total of four 12 millimeter bolts that we have to remove. One's gonna be right up here. There's gonna be another one way over here. One back here. And then there's gonna be one right up here as well. And then once you remove those, the skid plate should slide out this way and then you can pull it out. So moving a little further back now, we want to remove this little plate here. This covers the drain plug, which we'll need access to to be able to drain the oil. There's gonna be a total of two 12 millimeter bolts that we'll have to remove to be able to drop this plate. So the drain plug is going to sit up here. It takes a 14 millimeter socket. Since I don't have the truck jacked up at the moment, I'm gonna start off by cracking this loose. Then I'm gonna slide my oil pan underneath and then uh, I will continue to thread this out by hand and then let the oil spill out into my oil pan. As the oil begins to drain, it's a good idea to go ahead and pop off your oil filler cap. This helps prevent a vacuum from building up inside of the engine and allows the oil to drain more quickly and more thoroughly. Oil will sometimes spill over, so you do want to just have a set of uh, shop towels or just regular paper towels even will do, just to be able to kind of clean up the mess as well as your hands if you happen to get any oil on yourself. Um, but once the oil has pretty much finished draining, We'll go ahead and hand tighten back in the drain plug. We'll remove our oil pan from out underneath the car. And then we'll go ahead and re-tighten the drain plug. You can also go ahead and reinstall the oil drain plug cover at this time. So now that we have the oil plug back in place, firmly tightened down and with that cover plate back on, we now want to go ahead and locate our oil filler canister. That's this guy right here. So this thing takes a 3 8 inch drive socket. What you're gonna do is you're going to twist out this bottom plate here and then we're gonna insert a little adapter that allows us to drain out the remaining oil that's inside of this filter canister. That way we don't get tons of oil everywhere. If 
If your oil filter doesn't come with one of these adapters, by the way, it's no big deal. This is just gonna make uh, removing the filter canister a lot cleaner because you won't get oil everywhere. So you can skip this step if you don't have one of these. So while we wait for that to finish draining, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna take that cap we're gonna remove the old rubber seal because our new kit came with a replacement seal. Um, so what I would do is either uh, dip this in some oil or otherwise somehow get it kind of lightly coated. Um, that way it kind of helps with the seal. We're gonna place this onto the cap. And then once that is done draining, we'll reinstall this cap back onto the canister. So on this filter, mine came with this little metal clip, so I'm just gonna pull that right off. So that's the clip there. And now we need to try and remove this entire canister. Now what most people will do is they will use um, the little oil filter socket to be able to pull this off. Um, I don't happen to have one of those, and I don't really care to run to an auto parts store to get one. So I'm gonna see if I can use a strap wrench instead around the base of it here, and see if I can use that to help loosen this up. So I can confirm that the strap method does work. However, it is a lot more difficult than just using the proper socket. Um, so if you have the ability to, I would recommend just going to an auto parts store and getting the oil filter socket. It'll make your life a lot easier. But if you happen to have a strap wrench laying around, um, you can make do with that as well. And once you've got it loose enough, you can actually use a 3 8 inch drive and then just put that into the bottom cap there and it'll allow you to unscrew this canister the rest of the way. So here is a look at our old dirty filter. This thing just comes right out of the canister once you've got this cap off. And uh, fortunately, it doesn't look like there's any metal shavings or any dirt or anything in there, so that's good. You always kind of want to check to make sure that there's nothing internally wrong going on. Um, but it's just kind of stained with all the oil, so that's good. So this is our new filter. Um, it does look a little bit different than the old one, but that's not a problem as long as it matches that same inside diameter. And as long as it fits inside the canister, those are the important things. Um, just make sure that when you're going to buy one of these, check to make sure that it is for the fifth gen uh, 4Runners. So uh, once we've got this out, um, we'll go ahead and put this new filter in. Uh, but before we do that, we want to replace the little O-ring that's on here. This O-ring is used and we don't want to reuse it anymore. Uh, fortunately, our filter came with a new one, so we'll take the old O-ring off and we'll place the new one on after we've dabbed it in a little bit of oil. So now that we got the new oil filter inside the canister and we put some oil along this new seal, we can go ahead and put this canister back in the car and we can use a 3 8 inch drive socket to be able to tighten this down all the way. Now ideally you should use the oil filter socket once again to tighten this down fully, but I am making do with just that 3 8 inch drive. Um, but it is on secure now. Um, the last thing we'll want to do is we'll just want to go around and try and wipe up any oil that's spilled anywhere. And then we can go and reinstall our skid plate as well as the front plastic piece. So that finishes everything up down below. Now we're going to go back up top and we'll go ahead and insert our funnel into the oil fill area. The truck is going to take about 6.6 .6 quarts of oil. And here it's still a little bit difficult to tell because of the way this dipstick is designed, but I do have oil fully covering the stick up to, looks like just below the maximum mark. So that's pretty much where we wanna be. Just make sure you add the full 6.6 .6 quarts, that way the truck has enough oil. We'll carefully remove our funnel and then reinstall the oil filler cap as well. 
And that pretty much completes the oil change. If you are wanting to reset the maintenance required light, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below that explains the procedure for that. I'm not gonna bother going through it in this video. But yeah, that's pretty much the oil change on the fifth gen 4Runner. Um, you will wanna start the car and then just check underneath the vehicle to make sure you have no oil leaks and then you'll pretty much be done. Um, so I hope you guys found this video informative. If you did, give it the thumbs up and give me a subscribe as well if you wanna see more DIY videos. I namely do stuff on my 370Z. For those of you that are are currently subscribers to the channel the next video i'll be doing will be the proper review of my supercharger kit i'll be filming that next weekend so look forward to that thank you guys for watching see you all in the next one later